Hey everyone, please welcome at you. Hope this video finds you doing super well. Just wanted to do a very quick video on the announcement Epic Games made a couple weeks ago that I'm sure we're all aware of that blew pretty much everyone's minds with the capabilities of Unreal Engine 5 and their demo Lumen in the Land of Nanite. And of, of course, the whole point of that demo was to highlight their new technologies, which were Lumen, which is a new dynamic lighting solution, which looks pretty awesome, and Nanite, which is a new way to quote-unquote virtualize, not entirely sure what this means, uh, 3D assets, 3D models, uh, anything with really large poly counts, if you will. And while this technology is incredibly impressive, I'm just trying to temper my expectations a little bit, especially when it comes to what this technology means for AR and VR. And the reason being, of course, this is running on a PS5 with what people are claiming are graphics capabilities of a GTX 2, uh, 2070, which is uh, still on the higher end of things. <laughs> and uh, actually, Ben from Road to VR wrote a pretty good article on this specific matter and what any on any of the technologies that epic showed would mean for ar and vr so i'll make sure to link that in the description below but while my expectations are a bit tempered uh at least in the short term i'm absolutely excited about what this could potentially mean for ar and vr down the road specifically around nanite and again while we don't really exactly know how nanite works yet and i'm sure those details will eventually come out because Epic loves to open source a bunch of different things, including their game engine. The, the premise of actually being able to virtualize assets that have millions upon millions of polygons and get that still high performance uh, that you traditionally would never see on consoles or any low performing hardware uh, is really a capability that cannot be understated. As I mentioned in the announcement video, like Nanite, was specifically designed for artists so that they don't have to worry about optimizing their models for real-time engines. And they mentioned a couple use cases like taking film grade assets, things that are designed with millions of poly counts and are, are not designed for real-time applications and getting them to work within Unreal. Photogrammetry is another huge one, areas where you basically are kind of dynamically creating models and they're not kind of hand-drawn and user-generated in an efficient manner. But I think the same thing also kind of applies to other areas and potentially even bigger areas with uh, specifically, I think, creating and editing 3D models in VR. In most VR creation tools, you either don't usually have the option to edit the underlying mesh or it tends to be a very time-consuming process, at least when you compare that to, say, traditional 3D modeling like Maya or Blender. And the reason this option almost never exists is because if I'm like your average user, someone who barely knows anything about graphics or game engines, I just really want to create stuff in 3D. Like, that's kind of the beauty of Tilt Brush, right? You just kind of drag and boom you have your art already done in 3d and i really could care less about poly counts and model <laughs> optimizations and any of the stuff that traditionally goes into graphics at the same time as the average user i would kind of also expect to be able to easily port those 3d models and whatever art creations i make and move them over from my creation space into any other application or any other game or any other game engine. And I mean, I think VRChat would be a really great example, right? It's, it's often very hard to just create something in VR and have that magically import into any application. Now, that's kind of what was traditionally happening, but potentially, and again, I want to quote potentially with Nanite, you should hopefully kind of if not eliminate those limitations, make it dramatically easier to now go from, hey, I've created something, it's very high poly, but boom, let me drop it into my Nanop based application and now we're talking. And hopefully your application is able to correctly handle it. Again, these are kind of speculations because we don't really know what Nanite is capable of, but 
not being not having to worry about optimization is huge and to be very clear here i'm not saying that if we there's no scenarios where you don't have to optimize your models anymore there are of course still it's extremely valuable to optimize your models i'm assuming nanite does not work in very very large scales so any optimizations you can do are extremely valuable but I think there is room where Nanai kind of opens up more flexibility down the road, and I think that's incredibly valuable. Of course, as a Unity developer and a primarily Unity channel, I would eventually love to see this type of technology come over to Unity, which is probably like years down the road. Uh, but for now, I think it's, it's safe to say that we can all agree this technology is absolutely amazing. It's gonna push and evolve VR and graphics in general in uh, a new direction, which I think is really, really exhilarating. But anyway, I want to keep this video pretty short, and there's probably a ton more that I can say about Nanite and what that actually means, but I would definitely love to know if you guys are excited about what Unreal is working on, and even more curious, actually, if what Unreal has shown has made you consider switching over from Unity to Unreal. Would definitely love to know that <laughs> down in the comments below. But yeah, uh, that pretty much does it. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. It's been Fuse Man, and I'm signing out.